everybody and welcome back to Easter Eggs Episode 3. And today we look at all the hidden goodies on the big race map. And, well, it's a relatively small map where there's a couple of Easter Eggs. But, unlike some of the other maps, the big race ones really were a challenge to find. At least some of them were and I'll get to those in a minute. First up, the sailing ship, which yeah, initially, at the very, very beginning, already threw up some challenges. Because I took a look on the bow area, and I'll take a look at the stern area. One of the things you'll notice is that the name is incredibly hard to read. It's not very clear. And so I have this large, relatively large, three-masted sailing ship that I don't really know the name of. So, of course, I started looking up three-masted sailing ships, and you kind of could guess how that went. It didn't really go all that well because there are actually still quite a few large three-masted sailing ships around the world. So that didn't work. So decided to look at the ship really, really closely, and lo and behold, on a little box on the stern, there was an actual readable or semi-readable name. And so taking a closer look at this box, um, I sort of was able to get the letters B-A-L-C-L-U something. And of course, with that little bit of information, I was actually able to find this peculiar ship. And so introducing to all of you, the Bell Coltha. And this was a ship, a sailing ship, built in 1886 in Glasgow, Scotland. And she was a cargo ship. She went around the tip of South America 17 times in 13 years and carried all sorts of different kinds of cargo. In 1899, her registry was changed to Hawaii, and she started to trade Pacific Northwest timber to Australia and then bring back Australian coal. In 1902, she was chartered by the Alaska Packers Association for the salmon trade, and she worked sort of two years there before getting stuck on a reef and being pretty badly damaged. She was then purchased by the Alaska Packers Association for a measly $500, and renamed the Star of Alaska. They patched her up, repaired her, and she returned to the salmon trade, uh, sailing between San Francisco and Alaska. In 1933, she was purchased by a new owner and renamed the Pacific Queen, where she appeared in the film Mutiny on the Bounty. And then she sort of went around as an exhibition ship, being sort of run down and not really well kept. Finally, in 1954, the San Francisco Maritime Museum purchased her and returned her to her original name of Belle Coltha. And in 1985, she was designated a National Historic Landmark. So if you ever happen to be in San Francisco, you should definitely go to the San Francisco Maritime Museum and check out the ship. In fact, if you remember watching the previous Easter Eggs episode, there was also another ship there, I believe it was the Elma. So if you ever are in San Francisco, definitely a good idea to go check out these pretty awesome ships. Moving away from the sailing ship, you'll quickly notice that there are a series of train tracks, and these actually lead to a train. And now, you might think it's a generic thing, but it's actually not. This particular train is actually quite special. This train, uh, train 110, uh, is a 462 Pacific type locomotive. And she is one of a kind, uh, and the smallest one ever built of this particular type. She was built in 1911 for the Little River Railroad in Townsend, Tennessee. She ran uh, through what is now the Great Smoky Mountain National Park until about 1939, serving as a logging engine. In 1940, she was finally sold to the Smoky Mountain Railway and ran until about the 1950s. She was abandoned in the early 1960s, and finally, in 1972, she was purchased uh, back, restored, and she returned to serve the Little River Railroad in Coldwater, Michigan. This train is still in service today, and you can actually go there and ride on both the passenger compartment and also uh, in the actual train engine itself. Also, maybe World of War trains confirmed? Moving away from the rail area, uh, there's a little port here with five different little ships. And I've covered two of them. The first one here is the ship called Starlight, and I covered her in Easter Eggs Episode 2. But moving over to the other side, and that's where there's a couple of interesting ships. First up, 
is this particular boat uh, with the name M-5-V. And I sort of looked at it and went, okay, this is an interesting name. I'm not sure how I'm going to find this. Well, I eventually did. She is, in fact, a fishing boat from Norway called the Howland. And this ship actually had quite a cool little bit of history. During World War II, uh, after Norway was occupied by Nazi Germany, um, she transported refugees from Norway to the Shetland Islands and then brought back things like arms, resistance fighters, so on and so forth. And she did this job from November of 1941 until late 1943, when she was finally sort of replaced by three American submarine chasers. After the war, she went back to being a fishing boat and kept serving as a fishing boat until the late 1960s. Finally, in 1971, she was donated to the, and please don't criticize my Norwegian, the Sunmare Museum, where she lies in pristine condition as a memorial to the Shetland bus boats. Next to the Helland is a pretty familiar fishing boat, if you ever watched episode 1 of Easter Eggs, and it's Tiny Boy 2. So, so far, things have been a little bit challenging, but it's the next two boats that, well, let's just say, burned about 7 hours, I think, of my time today <laughs> looking for these just these two boats. And I can only really, I think, have information about one of them, so I'll get to that in a minute. That's the Pluto one, by the way, that I have information for. The other one, this blue and yellow one that you see, well, it's designated YDT7, and I looked it up online, and the closest thing that even somewhat fits this is that there was a U.S. Navy uh, ship that was redesignated YDT7 in 1944, as a dive tender and if you look on the ship there is what appears to be a rather old style diving suit however that's about it there's no photos to confirm her identity because any photos that were of the ship were from before her conversion so there's no photos and she was transferred to the maritime administration in 1948 and her fate is completely unknown but as crazy as YDT-7 was, at least there was some kind of record for that ship, even though it wasn't the perfect uh, kind of record, and I didn't have a photo to absolutely confirm the, the actual boat. But this one was even harder. Pluto, and it's a tugboat, and that's all I had. And, oh, and there was a little number, 271, on that little thing above the bridge. So, armed with what appeared to be quite a few pieces of information, I went off looking for this boat. Nothing. Dead ends everywhere. And anything that that looked like a tugboat that popped up with that name didn't look like it at all. The, the funnel was the wrong shape, the you know superstructure was in the wrong place, the windows were wrong, the portholes were wrong. And I spent, if you could you know believe this, I spent five hours looking for this one particular boat. Nothing. Eventually, started resorting to Google image search. So I was scrolling through Google images, hundreds and hundreds of images until suddenly one image caught my attention. And I looked at the image and I was like, that's it. That's the shape of this particular tugboat. And it was a model. It was a model made by Frenchman River Model Works. And I immediately noticed it and I was like, okay, that's it. But what information do you have? And I clicked on their website and I clicked through it and all they had was that this particular tugboat was a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers tugboat built around the 1950s. I couldn't find any specific information even with that extra piece of information about the Pluto. But I did find similar tugboats. So, for example, this is the Abaco. This is the former ST-2141. And that number gave me the idea that probably Pluto was ST-271. But again, looked that up to no effect. But I did find a couple of examples of this tugboat, including this one called Bayfield at the Lake Superior Maritime Visitor Center in Duluth, Minnesota. Anyways, folks, that's all the Easter eggs on the big race map. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Of course, if you have any information on the last two boats, do make sure to leave me a comment in the comment section below. Anyways, folks, have a fantastic week, and I'm looking forward to talking to all of you again soon.